Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Damn Parenting, your English-speaking parenting podcast from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And as always, we are your hosts, Eva and Maren. Good morning, Maren. We are back this week and we are actually going to be covering in both the Damn Chats and in our expert episode, we are going to be covering schools. Basel schools mm -hmm. particularly. Today we're going to be chatting about the intake formulas because basically myself and Mar both have now our children signed in to a school as it's meant to be after the third birthday. You'll get a, a letter, you have to fill it in and then there's going to be a deadline you have to do it with. You're going to hear all about this on Wednesday's episode with Isabella Cruz. She leads the school choices talks and workshops in Monty's world and online. You'll be able to find her under Kaleidoscope Consulting. We thought we'd actually just do this damn chats because both myself and Maren have literally recently had to fill in these forms that we just got actually about our school. So we just wanted to give you guys a heads up on what you might be sent and the differences on what's happening with us because we're actually going to two very different schools. Maren's on one side of the city, I'm on the other side of the city. And so we thought we'd just have a little chat. This is going to give you a heads up on what to expect. Expect. Maybe you actually had a different experience with your intake formulas as well. We'll be delighted to hear about that as well. So yeah, Maren, what happened with you? What was your paperwork? We got the letter, we applied, put all the forms in, blah, blah, blah. Got an email, you're accepted at the school, your first choice school, which by the way, in 95% of the cases happen. So if anyone is in the process and worrying, it really, in 95% of the cases, you get your first school and then the other is the first three. That's what I've been. Yes. Thinking. Eva is shake. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Her. Honestly, I, I just had this chat with someone and like they were so hell bent on getting onto the school that our, we are sending mm -hmm. our daughter to and they didn't. And they're just like, they're still applying. They're still actually, even though they've been accepted to the other school, they're like, no, we still want to go to this school. And they've heard lots of stories about how even people living on the same road as a, as a school won't mm -hmm. actually be accepted. So there's no logic to this madness of the school lottery system, it seems. Well, there you go. So different, yeah, you can already hear this with us, different experiences and different information. So I guess chat to a lot of people to get the, the full scope of it. That's the info I had. So I was not so worried about getting in. But anyway, we got in, we got the email, we got the um, invitation for the uh, intake talk where we're going to sit down with the, I don't know, a person from the school and just getting familiar with them. But in high and um, in before they send us an intake form that we had to fill in. And I'm just going to briefly go through what ours looked like. So we are at a school near Wester Park. It's a Montessori school. And it was the, the first stuff with like basic information, name of the child, name of the parents or caregivers, all their contact info. Then the emergency contact, two people you have to put down if they can't reach you. And then the next one was, is there any physical Besonderheiten? So is there anything that we take notice, like allergies or medicine that the child has to take? And then is there any special treatment they're getting, like physiotherapy or any other kind of therapy? Is there any is there anything special at the birth? I said none. We did have the vacuum, but I guess, I don't know if there was anything out of the super ordinary. The next one was, did they go to a daycare or point of spiel saw or any of that? And then is there anything that is special around the child? And they listed a couple of things. So they listed, is there any special stuffed animal? Is there anything with bottle? Was there any sleep problems? Is there any problems with letting go or like, saying goodbye is there anything special about their playing or their friends then the next one was is there any friends that the child knows already from daycare going to the same school which in our case wasn't because our daycare is at the other end of the city funny enough one of the children who used to go to the daycare now moved into our neighborhood and actually that kid is in the school but they've been enrolled already for a year so they won't be in the same group but she still doesn't know one person because one child that we used to go to Montessori playgroup with lives also near because the playgroup is near our neighborhood. So this child will be there. But they ask if there's any friends already at the school. Then they asked, is there any extra information? And this is the field where I put in the language situation that we have at home. So they are aware of that. I said, my daughter speaks German with me, English with the father, that we have a family language of mostly English, but also German. And I specifically wrote down, we do not speak Dutch at home. She has all her Dutch 
from daycare. And this is how we will handle it. I said we read Dutch books and I have basic knowledge of Dutch, but that's the extra information I put in there. So if you have a field like that and you're, of course, an international family, this would be information to disclose there. And then there was a question of, is there any dyslexia in the family? And if they can contact the daycare, if they have any further questions about the child or anything. And that was that, just the date, signature. That was the basic intake. So nothing super crazy. But you had, not crazy, but you had a very different one because we were chatting about yours. Yeah. So for our school, we actually had two formulas. One, which is obviously, you know, who are the parents and, you know, the emergency contacts and that kind of stuff. But there was one and it's just called the intake formula. And so it was just kind of like, you know, where do you live? It's more or less kind of the same as you, you know, do you have brothers and sisters, that kind of stuff. But we also had the question of what are your nationalities? I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Any specific languages? So I was like, oh, Okay. Oh, they yeah. did. So they did specifically they ask for languages. Did, yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. I. So this was already kind of giving me a bit of a. Oh, maybe there's a bit more internationalism mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. school than I actually thought. Or um, multilingualism. Yeah, like I yeah. didn't see it in the school as such, mm-hmm. like that I was hoping to. Uh, we heard from Eowyn in the the recent episode we had with Eowyn about the schools. So, I mean, I didn't actually see it, but now when they're putting it on this paper, I was feeling a little bit better. But then it was a case of they also asked things like, is there any higher intelligence in your family? Mm-hmm. And my husband, like, this is all in Dutch. My husband had to Google this to be like, what do they mean by this? And we were kind of thinking, oh, this just must mean like, you know, just beyond smart that there's something genetically potentially or whatever. And obviously not. <laughs> Although Funny enough that with you, they ask for, is there any supernatural intelligence? And here we ask, is there any dyslexia? <laughs> Oh, no, we did get the dyslexic question, but it was okay. just the fact that I was telling my family and they were like, well, you know, your uncle used to do stuff with NASA. And I'm like, well, a lot of people worked with NASA, even janitors worked with NASA. So, I mean, come on. But yeah, it was just a case of they also, which I thought was actually really nice was, is there anything happening in the period where there might be a pregnancy, you're moving house? Is there anything also happening in that time frame? Nice. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. They also asked, was there anything that happened during the Pouters period? So the toddler period. Mm-hmm. So if anything might have mm-hmm. happened as it were. So I was kind of thinking, okay, this is actually quite nice. But then, and I found this mm-hmm. part, the difficult part, they were like getting to know your child. They basically mm-hmm. ask you to tick the boxes of, I don't know, maybe 20 characteristics here. Oh, well, they give them Dutch. to you. They gave them to me, yes. Okay, at least. I can't even translate some of these right now, but I mean, it's just a case of, you know, are they anxious? Are they restful? Are they overactive? Do they take their own initiatives? Are they happy? Are they quick to get nervous or quick to get scared? Do they like to research? Um, Are they independent? Do they like to help people? Are they impulsive or spontaneous? Are they dominant? There's, There's a lot of these kind of questions. And honestly, it took us a while because I would say one thing, my husband might say the other, and then I was like can we go to daycare and ask them for the person? (laughs) Let's see. Because I just, I honestly feel like I know my child from my eyes. My husband sees her from his eyes. And I think daycare, you know, there's this whole perspective. And I just didn't want to give it a like a favoritism of like, well, this is how I perceive my child. Yeah, because this is when I saw this and I texted you like, hey, did you get this? And you were like, no. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Okay. So every school is going to be different with what they ask. And it then went on to asking like, what does your child like to play with? Do they like to play together or on their own or both? Do they like to play outside or inside or both? What do they actually like to play with most? So we have to actually write down things like, you know, Play-Doh, magnetiles, reading, you know, and then what's her favorite thing? And then, yeah, obviously the allergies, the medicines, uh, anything with the consultancy bureau. Do they see? Do they hear? Do they eat? Do they sleep well? (laughs) Mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, they're really, I also feel like this is six months to go. Like this is quite a lot can happen in these six months as well. So I kind of felt it was quite too much. And then, yeah, they also have, they are actually classed under things like their languages, their motor skills their independence they're like there's a they're broken down into all these different kind of things and then equally just as you said do they know someone going to the school can we contact your daycare for example those kind of things which obviously we said yes to and then also are they going to go to bso so yeah we had a very different intake formula which i found very interesting but i think did you say you're going to go to your school for the intake as well 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Maybe they I, will ask her there. Yeah. I don't think we do. So that maybe this wow. is the difference. Maybe okay. you're actually going to have a personal yeah. thing experience. But yeah, as I said, I find it strange that they ask us to fill this in now, six months prior to starting school. Mm when things can change maybe you want to send me this form because if i have to sit down and this is i always feel so weird and i've had this already with the daycare where they ask you so describe your child and then of course i know my child but there's like well so what are the words that i want to use what are, <laughs> what are the characteristics what, what is this and then they had to ask me a couple of questions and said oh yeah okay so maybe if i sit down with that form and be like hey she's if she's this she's that so sometimes it's so hard to put this feeling and you know this knowledge of your child to actually into words that someone else can perceive and the character it's so hard and then sometimes you don't think of stuff because it's yeah normal for you and you don't have to if someone would ask you describe how do you get into a car right it's like okay you have to hold the handle you have to push it out like these things is how I always feel if someone asks me so how's your child and then I have to come up with these like oh what is she actually like what is her character how is her personality and I sometimes have a little problem with putting this into words that someone else can understand yeah uh, that's that's why when I got the file and I was just going through all the pages and that's why I messaged you like what did you get and you're like yeah just a yeah. simple thing I was like whoa okay but if you are going to meet them, I'm sure you're going to have a more personal yeah. chat about them. So, yeah. but yeah, we want, we thought it would be kind of interesting for you guys to hear our experience with signing our children up to school. As Myron was saying, so she got her first choice. We actually got our first choice, funnily enough, but I do have to say some of the friends from daycare, unfortunately, didn't. So they're going to a different school. So my daughter's going to be going to the school, unfortunately, on her own from her the older kids group as it is now, which is kind of a shame. But funnily enough, we hadn't actually told my daughter yet that it was definitely confirmed. And the next day, her best friend came over to her saying, we're not going to go to the same school, but that's okay because we're, we're we, you know, we can see it, still see each other or something. So she came home to tell us she wasn't going to the same school as him. And I was thinking, oh, well, okay, that's that chat finished <laughs> like I didn't even have to try to tell her about it because I was so nervous because you know the these children form really good it's such an amazing societal and like developmental aspect of going to the kingdom of life that they're able to actually really learn with other children especially if they're only children themselves that they're this is where they really learn this is when they learn who they like and what characteristics they like what they don't like if they like playing with the older kids or the younger kids and so it's been a, a great learning experience and so so yeah, going to the new school, it's a little bit heartbreaking. She's not going to be going with all her friends, but you know, it is only school and there are play dates afterwards and there'll be weekends as well where we can arrange. I don't know if I'm ready for school. Yeah, it's such a big topic. And I've said this to you because you told me that, oh, I don't know. Did I pick the right school? Is it going to be the right thing? And oh, I, I couldn't sleep. Stuff. Yeah, I was so panicked. <laughs> But then it's like nothing is set in stone and you will hear this on the episode with Isabel. We talked about this also and she reassured us, get in, get a feel, see how it goes and you can always change things after. Of course, it's not easy breezy walk through the park to rearrange things and reapply and do all that. But if you really don't feel this is the right choice for your child, then Obviously, you will go over all these hurdles, but sometimes, yeah, you just also need to get a feel and settle in, be positively surprised about things, but always with the reassurance in mind that if really something doesn't sit right with me, I can first of all address it. And at the same time, I can always change it because we're not enrolled in any, I don't know, PhD program where you can't change anything, but we are enrolled in Basa school where we still have plenty of opportunities to change and people move and all that stuff. So get in the waters, get to know your environment. And then if it really doesn't sit with you, you can always change it. And I guess that's how we will start this journey and listen to your child, you know, because sometimes it's you might not think it's the best thing. But if your child is thriving and they're having a good time and they have friends and all that, then that's all that matters, you know. So I've had this talk in my own family with me and my sister where I went to a school that I really, really loved and I had an amazing experience there. And my mom really wanted my sister, she's seven years younger, to go to the same school. And it was a very different school by the time that my sister got there because they had 
tripled in the student size and everything was really, really different from when I went there. And she absolutely hated it. She absolutely hated being there because yeah, it's like she has this degree now from the school where it's like, okay, great. You went to that school, but she really had a horrible experience. Well, horrible, but she really didn't like it and it wasn't nice. And she didn't get to enjoy all the quirks and nice things that I had. And I really enjoyed and valued about the school. And she would have been much happier at her school, which was in quotation, not as prestigious as the one that she then ended up going to. And I was like, yeah, you see, you know, it's it comes down. We can, as parents, want all that we want for our children from the school. But at the end of the day, the children are going to that school. They are the ones who are dealing with the teachers. They are the ones who are dealing with the friends. They are the ones who are dealing with all that. And if my child says, I love going to school, I'm super happy, I like my teacher, I like my friends, then who am I to judge if they have to write sports program or they have to write this? As long as my child's happy, I guess, at the end of the day, that provides a good learning environment. Yeah, that's, that's my also, two cents on that. Yeah, one of the things that was affecting me was like, are any of her friends going to go to her school? And it turns out none of them are because they all got, went, are now going to different schools. And that was really breaking my heart, as I said. Like, it was just such a, I didn't even know how to tell her. <laughs> and her friend <laughs> now told her. But my husband actually pointed out and he said, yeah, but people can change schools. They can move away. There can be transitions. Yeah. So the thing is, even yeah. if they do go to the same school, they not might not guarantee. even be happy and they might be leaving anyway. You yeah. know, so the thing was, there was never any a guarantee anyway. And now at least she's going into a school where she'll know one kid from her daycare from a year ago. So, I mean, she's not going in completely yeah. blind, but at the same time, it gives her an opportunity to go and meet new people. So his words of wisdom really calmed me down a little bit because it was like, yeah, that's that's 100 percent truth. Yeah. And with that, we'll leave you to the big adventure and journey of finding a school and settling in. And like I said earlier, we will be covering this topic with Isabel Cruz, who is giving us a little overview about the whole landscape of school choices here in Amsterdam, if you want to listen into that. Otherwise, we'll leave it at that for this chat. You can hear us every Wednesday with an expert episode and every Monday with a chat. If you want to make sure that you're not missing out on any episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on Apple or Spotify or YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on Instagram, Damn Parenting Podcast. Make sure to activate the notifications so you get a ring when we're coming out with a new episode. Anything else that I need to add to this advertisement blog? I think that's it. Yeah, share, share, share. Five. Yeah, share, share, share this with anyone who you think this might be useful information to. Give us a five-star rating on Spotify so we can be seen by other parents. We will hear you on the next episode. Bye.